There we go. You good boy? Hi everyone, welcome to rural France. This here is um, an abandoned house, which is a very interesting design on the top of the hill, which I'll show you in a second. And they didn't get planning permission from the man, and so now it's, uh, it's a husk, it's a shell, it's an abandoned uh, house. And uh, this is, seems to be the only evidence I see in this part of France, in the south, sorry, in the southwest, more west, that there's actually any young people here. And yeah, you know, it's nice, the graffiti's good, and the floor is all clean, someone swept this place up. But, like I often do, I come out without any real point to my video, and I just want to use the camera and you guys as my psychotherapist and to be able to speak freely in a place where there's no, there's no human beings around me. There's a dog, there's a Jack Russell who went to the vet the other day and he's fine. Um, but no, just uh, seeing all these evictions, Occupy LA, all the other occupations that have been evicted recently, like Toronto, it, um, it fills my heart and soul with this rage, this seething anger at my fellow man. But then I try and harness it for something positive, and that's the, the real challenge, is when we see injustice and oppression, we can't just give ourselves heart attacks and high blood pressure and stress-related illnesses. We need to somehow use our anger and our righteous indignation to try and do something about it. But what? That's the thing. Like We are literally living in the seventh circle of hell with all these little fevered ego demons running around, putting on these police uniforms are working for big corporations and ruining the planet and ruining the human experience. But here's the thing, here's the irony, here's the dilemma, here's the contradiction of um, everything that's bad, is that without the bad we wouldn't appreciate the good, we wouldn't have that contrast, and also the really bad things like tyranny and fascism and corporate control really give us something powerful to get our teeth into, to really try and express ourselves as human, as human beings, really, that when we see something really bad happening, we can actually do something. And that reminds me of the expression, a friend in need is a friend indeed, because it is a great honor to be able to help someone, to be able to treat others as you would like to be treated yourself. This is the divine. This is the oneness that we talk about when you are able to help someone in distress or someone in need. And... Um, in helping others, that's truly the most selfish thing you can do. It's, you're helping yourself. And so people say, oh, there's no such thing as altruism. It's purely a selfish act. But, well, yeah, but if we're all one, how is there a separation between selfishness and altruism? There isn't. By helping the other, you help yourself. So without really having a point, I think the uh, system, the economic financial system, is doing a very good job of collapsing itself. But we need to somehow figure out a way to have a, a collapse of the slave ship without too much human suffering. And uh, there's people committing suicide, there's family living in cars, there's people drowning their brain in psychotropic pharmaceutical substances because they start believing that the economy is real, that their job is real, they get all their their um, self-worth from their career and then when that starts collapsing or from their relationships and, and they start to really believe in the illusion of samsara sorry to use a Buddhist term but they start believing that the dream is the actual reality isn't that right Rio? you good boy? Um, so how do we try and make this transition from proto-fascist Nazism which is what the New World Order is to I don't know, something a little bit less evil. The answer is education. The answer is every single one of us getting our voice out there, using our, our, our voice, really, which is our most powerful weapon. Words are weapons to speak out. And it's not just by making films which go online, which are shared with people. It's also speaking out against injustice when you see it in the everyday world. And that's one thing that I don't see enough of is uh, when there's an accident or when there's someone being hurt or someone being beaten up. Uh, most people, they've done studies on this, the Milgram experiments, all sorts of studies. People will just kind of walk away, just walk away as people are being injured and hurt. And uh, the most disturbing one I've seen, sorry, the two most disturbing ones I've seen was the story, uh, that experiment that scientists did in America where they had an, a, an actress, a little girl, she's like eight years old, and an actor that pretended to, um, kidnap her and grab her 
And everyone said, oh my God, look, there's a guy kidnapping a girl. And no one did anything. It was only two guys at the end. Um, they must, must have been in their late 20s. actually came to challenge the guy. And there was that story recently as well in China where that little girl, toddler, got hit by a van twice. And um, she's lying there in the middle of the road. And the CCTV camera captured all these Chinese people. It doesn't matter they're Chinese. This is a problem all internationally. All these people doing nothing. And when we think about this on an esoteric, spiritual, collective consciousness level, are these people who walk away, walk away from injustice, are they really sentient? Are they really firing on the same cylinders that you are, or that I am? To give you another personal example, I'll post this video uh, next week when I get back to the UK and I can edit it. Um, I was with my friend on the M1 motorway, which we call highways, in Britain we call them motorways leaving London and there was an 80 mile an hour smash into the concrete reservation and this car that was directly in front of us flipped over onto its back and uh, me and my friend we quickly pulled over and the worst part was even before anyone knew whether the, the passengers were alive a whole bunch of cars stopped but then many of the cars about 20 of the cars just drove around the accident and said oh we'll get the fuck out of here before they even knew whether the passenger were, were alive and I had to dodge traffic try and get to this car that was upside down and luckily she was unhurt but we had to get her out of this upside down car that was smoldering and so are the people that ignore evil the same as you are they operating on the same consciousness level or is it fear are they the same of us as us but scared I don't know but moral cowardice is probably the greatest sin that we can think of when we see our fellow human beings being hurt and we do nothing. And uh, sometimes I, it's a perverse thought I have, but I sometimes wish that I could confront more real world evil or bullying so that I could actually do something about it in my life. But I do what I can. But as Martin Luther King said, I think it was him, correct me in the comment section if I'm wrong, he says that when the shit hits the fan, it's not the words of our enemies that we, re we remember, but the silence of our friends. And with that in mind, stay strong. Remember, this is all one wonderful experiment, a great big um, dream in the mind of the universe. And no one knows what the hell is really going on. We can all create poetry and art and mysteries to kind of extrapolate and analyze the overall mystery. But um, that's it. I full of love today and I just wanted to come and speak to camera at the abandoned house. So um, that's it. Now I walk towards the camera. I have no editing software. This is where I switch off. So it'll be bye.